Hello, BookTube. I want to try a, at least the beginnings of the sketch at uh, Friday Reads uh, to give you an idea of the main things that I'll be reading this weekend. Uh, it's not it's not everything. I plan on doing a lot of reading this weekend. And I also have a yen to do some rereading, um, specifically uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, which there is no good reason for me to reread Edgar Rice Burroughs ever. But I have a, I have a yen to go back to Barsoom, uh, and it, in summertime you yield to such things. Uh, and also, uh, probably this weekend I will be starting my annual reread of the Iliad. Uh, I don't, I don't know that for sure. I might let that wait a bit. But, uh, but I want to show you these four books that I'm definitely going to be getting to uh, this weekend. Starting with this, this is Catherine Zuckert's Machiavelli's Politics, uh, in which she looks at uh, the whole picture instead of what a lot of political analysis tend to do, which is just look at the prince. Uh, she looks at the, whole, at the whole thing, all of his writings, but especially the dialectic, the balancing seesaw act between the political views expressed in The Prince and the political views expressed in Machiavelli's other masterpiece, Discourses on Livy, uh, which many biographers of Machiavelli have, have sort of kind of thrown their hands up and said they don't match up. So one of the other, one of the two of them had to be written disingenuously. And uh, uh, according to the, the advanced material in this book, this author says not. And I agree, it's not. <laughs> I have waited for a long, if, that, if the author and I sort of are on the same page, it will be a, a conclusion that I've waited a long time for. I don't think that either one is insincere. And I, I would tend to agree with people who, who say that Machiavelli is one of the most misunderstood authors in history uh, on that score. So <laughs> I, I, uh, I look forward to it. Uh, the next two are rereads. I, I, I read my way through them already. This time I'll be going through with a fine tooth comb because I'm reviewing both of them. Uh, this is Patrick Hunt's biography of Hannibal, uh, which I liked quite a bit on my first way through. So I will, I will give it a much more thorough uh, read through this time. Uh, more thorough, <laughs> in fairness sake, more thorough than 850 words can possibly fit. <laughs> but I, I want to make sure, whether I'm writing 200 words or 850 words or 2,000 words, I want to make sure that I know the subject backwards and forwards before I write anything. Uh, so I'd be, I'd be rereading this and, and probably getting up from my reread periodically to consult other sources and try and track down what sources he consulted. Uh, and then the next one's also a reread, uh, far more contemporary. It's the Netanyahu years. I think we saw it on this channel before. It's Ben Caspett's uh, book in an English translation. Uh, I'm, I'm distrustful of it uh, because it's an English language translation. I have been in touch with a friend of mine in Tel Aviv uh, and she's perfectly willing to Skype with me and sort of go through a couple of key passages just to get a kind of a sonogram feel for how close the translation is. And I want to do that, uh, but I also want to read, I will reread this book with a fine tooth comb, and I will also probably, again, be popping up all throughout to double check it against other things that I have here, uh, other other books, and no primary sources, but other 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 histories of the Netanyahu years, just to, to sort of keep a pulse on it. It, it. Again, it's only 850 words, and it's here today and gone tomorrow. It's it's. A, print newspaper so it still I, I want to do a good job uh, and then you, you of course have noticed there's no made up stories except for Edgar Rice Burroughs which I'm sure all of you think is your great grandfather's fiction <laughs> so, and I'm not sure I can disagree with that I, the, the thing I, that I have a yen to reread is A Fighting Man of Mars which is part of the, the Barsoom stories but it, it doesn't involve the, any of the cross-world stuff that uh, that the few people who know the John Carter of Mars novels tend to think about. They tend to think John Carter of Mars. They tend to think Ulysses S. Paxton. They, they tend to think Earthmen transformed, transported to Mars, and with the lighter gravity therefore gaining superpowers, uh, and the exoticism of that. Uh, but a lot of the Barsoom stories are just stories of Barsoom. They don't involve Earthman at all. And A Fighting Man of Mars is one of them. Uh, it's a, the, just the, the rollicking, swashbuckling adventures of two young swordsmen, two young bravos. Uh, and I haven't read it in a long time, and I, I, I think that's the one I will settle on. Uh, but in addition to that, I do have a made-up story that I want to show you, and it's this enormous thing. It's The Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams, the first book in something called The Last King of Austin Ard, which is a sequel to his uh, 
trilogy that started with the dragon bone chair and I that so many people love and I don't get that I've read that trilogy twice all the way through and I don't get why it's revered it's just awful just just terrible uh, just mud in, in literary form <laughs> but <laughs> I got the book and it, the, the original series did indeed elicit a lot of fan enthusiasm so I'm gonna try this one I will just uh, I read the author's introduction in which he says that you do not have to read the first three books to read and understand this book. He, he, he says in his author's note that he was particularly careful to make sure that was not true. So I'll take him at his word and I'll give it a try. Uh, I remember the, the, the books well enough so that I think I'll be okay even if it's not true, but I, I want to see. I want to see uh, what kind of a job it is. I got the advanced copy of this thing and summarily ignored it. Uh, but I, I'll be reading this, so that that is. Uh, I guess I can do a stack, can't I? That is, that is kind of a, a thumbnail bit of the main reading that I'll be doing this weekend: two rereads, four review, uh, and two new reads, plus uh, lots of bits and piece checking. That takes time, uh, and a reread that I think will be a pure guilty pleasure for the summer. Uh, but. Uh, as usual with Friday Reads, I'm curious to know what you're going to be doing, so feel free in the comments to let me know, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.